vote of each member is a single transferable vote and each elector can give their preferences among the total pool of candidates for the president. After the day of the elections, the returning officer, who is the Secretary General of Rajya Sabha, calculates the total value of votes polled by each candidate. The total number of valid votes is counted according to which the winner is decided. For example, if the total valid votes is 10,000, the winner should have at least 5,001 votes. Wait, what if no candidate meets the quota? A recounting is done and in the process, the candidate who receives the lowest vote is eliminated. Say that there are four candidates in total and the total valid votes are 10,000. The vote distribution is as follows. Now, since candidate A with the highest vote has failed to receive the quota to win the election, candidate C will be eliminated and the 1,000 votes received by C will be distributed among the other candidates according to their second preference. Say out of 1,000 votes, 500 goes to candidate B, which is the second preference, and 400 of the second preferences go to candidate D, and 100 go to candidate A. The updated tally of votes will be as follows. The quota hasn't still been met by any candidates. The same process repeats and recurs until candidate D's votes will be distributed among A and C. The final tally will be 4,900 votes for A and 5,100 votes for B. Finally, we have a clear winner by the last round of counting. This is the algorithm behind electing a president in India. What's interesting about the process is how the transferable vote system works. Like in our example, it initially seemed like candidate A was going to win, but in the end with the process of elimination and redistribution of votes received by other candidates, B surprisingly emerged as the victor.